biomonitoring also gives us important information about nutrition, the foods we eat, and how those foods affect our health. Remember the NHANES survey? In Section 2, we talked about how biomonitoring scientists use the NHANES survey results to gather exposure data, or information about the levels of chemicals in people's bodies. Scientists also use NHANES results to gather data on nutritional biomarkers, the levels of certain nutrients in our bodies. Shown is the cover of the CDC's second national report on biochemical indicators of diet and nutrition in the U.S. population, 2012. CDC publishes the findings in the National Report on Biochemical Indicators of Diet and Nutrition in the U.S. Population. The first version of the report was released in 2008, and it included 27 nutrition biomarkers. The second was published in 2012 and included 58 biomarkers. Updates to the 2012 version occurred in 2020. Some of those biomarkers include fat and water-soluble vitamins, iron status indicators, and iodine. This information helps doctors, scientists, and public health officials find out if we're getting too little or too much of certain nutrients. Based on biomonitoring research, public health officials make policy changes to help us get the nutrition we need. For example, folic acid is a nutrient that's very important for pregnant women and infants. If pregnant women don't get enough folic acid in their diet, their babies are more likely to develop a type of health problem called a neural tube defect. In 1998, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, started requiring food manufacturers to add folic acid to cereals and other grain-based foods, a process called folic acid fortification. To see how effective folic acid fortification was, biomonitoring scientists developed a more accurate way to test blood folate levels, or the amount of folic acid in a person's blood. The test showed that blood folate levels increased 50% among all race and ethnicity groups after the new policy went into effect. However, 20% of women of childbearing age still have less than the recommended amount of folate in their blood, which means their future children could have a higher risk of neural tube defects. Shown is the cover of the CDC's second national report on biochemical indicators of diet and nutrition in the U.S. population, 2012. To learn more about folic acid and folate levels, see the national report on biochemical indicators of diet and nutrition in the U.S. population. Here's another example. You've probably heard about trans fatty acids, TFAs, often known as trans fats. Consuming too many TFAs may put people at a higher risk of developing heart disease. In 2006, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, started requiring food packaging to include TFAs on the nutrition facts labels. Some state and local health departments also took steps to help people eat less of these fats. They required restaurants to limit their use of TFAs and launched awareness campaigns to teach people about the health risks associated with TFAs. But did all these changes lead to people consuming less TFAs? Biomonitoring scientists turned to the NHANES survey data to find out. Scientists at the Environmental Health Laboratory used data from the 1999 to 2000 and 2009 to 2010 NHANES surveys to compare TFA levels in adult Americans' blood. The results showed that TFA levels dropped by 54%, meaning that people consumed a lot fewer TFAs after the national and state policies went into effect in 2006.